action. Been terrific all night. Pickett kicks. Is it a point or a goal? It's a goal. And the Blues fans' hearts break all around the country. Hello and welcome to Little Birdie Sports Show for a Monday first look. I'm your host, Nikki Sylvester. Joining me today is MG for all things AFL Round 22. And we've also got Top Rope on the line for NRL Round 22. First look is proudly brought to you by Little Birdie TV, topsport.com.au, punting form and manscaped for the very best in men's grooming. MG, how was your weekend? You had a great night on Saturday night? Yes. You did? Yeah, it was, um, <laughs> yes, went out to the uh, the football Saturday night and uh, saw an exciting finish with uh, Melbourne getting over the line against yes, Carlton. Yes. So uh, one of the worst first halves you'll see uh, for this year. Yep. Uh, a lot of people might have been... Uh, not coming back from the bar at half time, but uh, yeah, the second half certainly made up for it. And obviously a close finish. Yeah. With uh, Carlton hitting the lead through Kerno and the Blue yeah. Baggers were up and about <laughs> and thought they'd uh, stitch their spot for the finals, only to have uh, Melbourne kick a goal with about 15 seconds to go. So uh, the MCG was a rocking both ways in the last minute. So yeah, yeah, it was good to see. Thrilling stuff, thrilling stuff. And I'm not even a Carlton supporter, but I think I was texting you just going, how are they not holding the ball? <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, we'll unpack that later it was, um, <laughs> when we go through the results. But yeah, poor uh, it was poor coaching and uh, and poor, poor execution from the players as well. How Carlton, if they uh, if yeah. they don't get on over Collingwood this week and miss the finals because they couldn't hold the ball in the last uh, oh. minute, minute and a half, it was uh, very poor to, from Carlton's point of view. Oh, I know, I know. Okay, top rope, top rope. Your team's back. The Storm, they had a win. It's going to be hard for you to pick between your two babies now. I mean, who do you take, South or Storm? Oh, my God. That's plenty of, you know, just like riding the hot hand. Uh, no, Storm well and truly back. Uh, did a, uh, a job on the uh, Panthers uh, last week. And uh, Souths, yeah, absolutely whacked the uh, Eels 26 nothing. So a couple of very impressive performances there. So, uh, yeah, Souths probably shaping up as the top contender to Penrith, which puts us in good stead because Thursday night we've got a, um, a replay of last year's grand final and a possible look at this year's grand final. Can't wait. And um, just give me a quick rundown on the golf because when I left for home, it was the playoff was just starting. So give me a quick rundown on the golf, the FedEx Cup. Oh, dear. The wildest golf player you've ever seen in your entire <laughs> life. It was, <laughs> you, you missed, wow. Uh, Zalatoris and Stracker could not have done any more to lose that tournament. Um, Stracker's found the water on the second playoff hole. Uh, could have, or He found the edge of the water, could have played it, chose not to, took a drop then put it within about six feet. Zalatoris almost went OB, chipped out, put it within about 12 feet, bent his, went to another playoff hole, a fairly short par three with water on the right. Zalatoris hits his and it bounces down onto the rocks protecting the water, somehow bounces on it six times, stays up, nestles against the fringe. Then Stracker puts his in the water. The striker goes and plays his, hits his in the sand, comes back, blah, blah, blah. Zalatoris thought about hitting it, thought about hitting it, took back, had a drop, put it within kind of five feet, been the putt and uh, first tournament win, but wild, wild playoff between two guys who did not want to win. It was crazy. What were, what were the betting fluctuations there, Top Rope? I, I was watching the last couple of holes. I mean, it was, uh, it was crazy. The betting fluctuations must have been unbelievable. It would have been wild. At some stage... Each of them would have traded at a dollar twenty at least. You would have thought so. Yeah, possibly even shorter than that for um, for um, Stracker on the last on the second last hole when he put his within really close and, and his last hole was good in the trees, but his iron game was spectacular. Almost missed the cut. Um, well, they sorry, didn't always miss the cut, but uh, they were talking on Friday. His girlfriend said, "What are we going to do if you're not here for the weekend? You look like you might miss the cut." So uh, a handy comeback. 63 on Friday and then coming back and getting dropped into that. First win on the PGA. Was it? The Zalatoris, yeah. Okay, awesome. And um, and obviously uh, Cam Smith, everyone is just expecting him to obviously um, come out and say that he signed with Liv. But um, I don't know. I think the PGA are just, they're just trying to rub him off now. They, they, they just don't even want to talk about him. He hasn't confirmed it because he wants to see all this FedEx cut money. Uh, he's definitely he's definitely going to live. Uh, but I, I did find it amusing that they did decide to assess him a two stroke penalty a day after. Just yeah. like we're <laughs> we're going to do we're going to do everything in our power to make sure <laughs> make sure Cameron Smith doesn't win. So uh, it was um, yeah. There's there's just a lot to play out at the moment. Um, I think the big question on Cam Smith is does he go to live before or after the President's Cup? So 
A lot of people are hoping he will play in the President's Cup, um, but I fancy he'll be playing in that live event in Boston. Okay, the live event in Boston. That's your tip there. Now, can you talk me through the NFL preseason? Because apparently some of the games have been spectacular. MG's talking up the punting. Yeah, I think MG's probably a man for this one. He's been on dominating on the uh, the punt. Yeah, good good start to have. It's good to have NFL back on our TV screens. Uh, probably, uh, I think, uh, speaking for Top Rope, it's probably up there with our favourite sports to both watch and bet on. Mm-hmm. So even though it's preseason games, uh, yeah, we uh, – Found a few uh, winners over the weekend. We couldn't tip them out because we don't have the uh, package or anything going. Yep. But our uh, NFL show, I think, is uh, about two or three th- weeks away. So we've got an um, uh, interesting lineup this year and Top Ropes champion at the bit. So uh, just uh, studying the form of the preseason games. But, yeah, it was uh, one of the better weekends you could have when you wake up first thing in the morning and you've got half a dozen NFL games Saturday and Sunday. And then in the afternoon night session, you've got the NRL racing and AFL to look forward to. So, yeah, it was one of uh, one of the more perf- perfect weekends you could have, I think. So. What more could you want? You said that to me. I said, what did you do on the weekend? You said, well, I went to bed early and I got up and I watched the NFL and I'm thinking, okay, this is every man's dream and any sporting woman's dream that you would just do sport all the way through, have a nice little nap, come up and wake up in the morning and you've got golf and NFL. Loving it. Yeah, You're living think, the dream. I think Top Rope's wife might, may hate me a little because if, if, you, <laughs> if you check out texting records, well, there's not many gaps over the last three or four days of uh, – Texting back and forth, so I apologise to Top Rope's wife if uh, the phone's been going off and on. But, yeah, there's a lot to cover and, uh, yeah, like little kids in candy stores, I think, uh, having a good time. Stay tuned for the NFL. Okay, all right, let's get into the AFL because it was a jam-packed weekend. All right, so Brisbane beat St Kilda 81-66. to The Western Bulldogs beat the GWS 62-57. to Adelaide beat the Kangaroos 103-74. to Geelong beat the Gold Coast 119-59. to Melbourne beat Carlton 79 to 74. Frio beat West Coast 71 to 47. Richmond beat Hawthorne 128 to 67. Sydney beat Collingwood 77 to 50. And Port Adelaide beat Essendon 146 to 62. Yeah, so second last round, Nikki. Um, mm-hmm. So pretty much all went to plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll check it off shortly, but eight or nine favourites yep. won, and most uh, nothing really came out of the ordinary mm-hmm. for us. So Brisbane got the job done against St Kilda. Um, Pretty ordinary match for the first half, uh, but the, Brisbane just got the job done. Unfortunately for St Kilda, it's been well highlighted that their full forward, Max King, kicked zero goals, five, and uh, mm-hmm. unfortunately that would have been the difference in the ball game. So yep. that uh, ended St Kilda's season, so they will be able to plan their uh, September holidays and hopefully uh, St Kilda can get around Max King going forward and uh, get him the support he needs in the off-season just to uh, – he's had a few – I think three times this year he's kicked uh, uh, five or more points in, in, in a game, so – um, you know, he's the difference and they need to put uh, more resources around him to get it yep. fixed up for next year. But, yeah, Brisbane got the job done. Um, the second game, Western Bulldogs and GWS was uh, pretty poor standard. Uh, the Bulldogs are struggling, but a bit like Collingwood would have been doing, they just got over the line to keep their season alive. So they set up this week where they uh, they have to win against Hawthorne to get in mm-hmm. and uh, they need Carlton to lose. So yep. that's all they need to do is get the four points. But, yeah, geez, it was an ugly game to watch. Um Adelaide Kangaroos, we can skip over that one. Adelaide got the job done. Both their seasons are over. But uh, Adelaide is finishing with a bit of momentum going into next year, which is solid. And Kangaroos, unfortunately, uh, they've got a lot of work to do. Uh, maybe Clarko is the answer if they get him signed. Mm-hmm. Um, thrashings, Geelong at home again. Um, uh, killed uh, GW, uh, Gold Coast, sorry. Um, 60 points, big win there. Uh, as we briefly mentioned earlier in the show, uh, the Melbourne game against Carlton was yeah. – very exciting game. It swung both ways late. Uh, it was very ordinary first half, but they opened up in the second half and showed why they're uh, finals contenders. And, uh, yeah, Melbourne got the luck of the draw with a, a late goal. Um, so now they're second on the ladder, Melbourne, mm-hmm. and they have to go into Brisbane on Friday night to win to maintain second. And as you're fully aware, Nikki, if they do lose, they can fall down as low as six. So huge match on Friday night, uh, which we'll cover on uh, – Friday show. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm just going to stop here. <laughs> Given that I really dislike Melbourne and I really don't want them to go back to back premiers, I might go to that game. I'm going to be in Brisbane on the weekend. They need me oh. to go. I might, Brisbane might need my support. Jeez. Just going to get on that train. Shout out there if you know, any hotels or airfares want to fly Nikki up there. <laughs> I'm already going. Oh, you're already going? <laughs> just need a ticket to the game. <laughs> oh, we can arrange that. Uh, the other Saturday night, sorry, game Frio and West Coast, uh, yeah. unfortunately, is. Destroyed a bit by weather, but Frio got the job done, which they had to do. So they got a chance to finish top four as well yep. with uh, everything that shakes out mm-hmm. on the weekend. And uh, on the Sunday, we had uh, Richmond destroyed Hawthorne. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're up and about Richmond. I like yep. the way they're going about it. They 
they look like they're uh, just starting to peak at the right time of the year, mm-hmm. uh, and they cemented their final eight spot, so they don't have the pressure going into the last week. They're getting yeah. you need to get a few players back, but they're uh, they're going to scare a few sides, maybe in the finals. Uh, Sydney and Collingwood, um, mm-hmm. the match of the round coming in for sure. Uh, not the best game I would have said I've seen, but uh, the pressure was up. Collingwood, we're going for 12 in a row. We said kind of going into the week was probably an, in an ideal spot. It was good for Collingwood to probably lose that game. Yeah. And they'll be cherry right for Carlton this week. Uh, Huge game. To try and finish in their top four, but gee, Sydney are good. Uh, I know we jumped on their bandwagon probably four or six weeks ago. I just like the way they're going about it. They've got no weakness, and if they finish second on the ladder and get home ground advantage, they're going to be mighty hard to beat, I think, um, going in for this grand final. So if you've got a ticket on them when we were mentioning it, I know you do, Nikki. You're uh, pretty excited on the <laughs> swans at the moment. I listen to the goats. <laughs> I'll give you a good sight. I think they've just uh, they've got the right balance. They're well coached. They're disciplined. Uh, they've got a lot of, uh, lot of ticks in their column there. And the last game, your Bombers. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, yeah, I don't know. They've got massive problems. Port smashed them. Uh, very disappointing for Essendon. Yeah. They've got a lot of work to do. I'm not sure they got the right coach, so no. interesting off-season for them. I know they've they've got him signed to a deal and stuff, but if I'm Essendon, uh, Top Rope loves a coach sacking, I think, yeah, they'll be sniffing around the Bombers before uh, the start of next season. Surely he's going to get a few coach sackings over the off-season. I mean, come on. I'll just keep track for you. <laughs> All right, let's go to the boogie wrap. Eight of nine faves, as MG mentioned, four of nine covers, four of nine over totals, and six of nine home teams. And for the season, uh, we're sitting at 71% of faves, 51% of covers, 55% over totals, and 62% for the home teams. Yeah, so it was dominated by eight of nine favourites. Mm-hmm. Um, but the bookies the bookies did, fared okay because only four covered, so yep. there was there was some balance in there. But, uh, yeah, it was a pretty good week of football, and the AFL have, uh, have had a pretty good four- or five-week stretch actually going in and yep. setting up for the last round into the finals has, has been an exciting finish. So there's some uh, good crowds, and mm-hmm. there'll be some – very good crowds oh, yeah. this weekend going as well. The Brisbane, Melbourne Friday night and then the uh, Carlton Collingwood yep. on Sunday. They'll get uh, maximum crowds. Yep, they will definitely get maximum crowds. Okay, let's have a quick look at the stings uh, for round 22. Three of four, he had 12.5 units bet and he finished with 5.82 units. And for this season, 237.5 units bet with a plus of 18.5 units and a total return of 7.8%. That's pretty good, actually. I was going to say 7.8%. Yeah, Nikki, not a bad week. Uh, went three or four, as you can see. Got off to an average start with the going over the St Kilda Brisbane total. Uh, fell well short. Uh, four goals short, and probably a lot of that can be attributed to Port Max King, Max King. kicking five uh, points from inside 30 metres all straight in front. But anyway, he can't win them all. Brisbane covered. Uh, that was a uh, solid uh, result there. Uh, easy watching the Adelaide Kangaroos game and also – the Geelong Gold Coast was uh, a weather watch when we uh, went through it on the Friday show and the weather cleared. So, uh, the, again, any time the weather uh, clears or goes the other way, the bookies are generally slow to react. So mm-hmm. they're games we try and circle around. So, yeah, the um, uh, the total went from about 153 to 158, but just doesn't move fast enough when there was no weather. So it was an easy watch at 178. So, yeah, solid week. Solid week for you, MG. Okay, now let's have a quick look at the Premiership market. Geelong, 265, Melbourne, 440, Sydney, 550, Collingwood, 8, Brisbane Lions, 10, Richmond, 13, Freo, 15, Carlton, 51, and Western Bulldogs, 51. There's going to be a lot of movement, Nikki, mm-hmm. uh, going into this week, and especially after this week. We've got spots, as we've uh, mentioned, two through to six will be uh, sorted out with this uh, few games going into this week. So Geelong are locked away at number, uh, number one, so... Their price won't move around too much, but yeah, there'll be a lot of fluctuations depending yep. on the uh, the lineups this week. So um, yeah, stay tuned for that. But yeah, it looks like a cracking final series. I think the AFL could not have asked for better scheduling, really, to go into round twenty three. Yep. Um, insane. Okay, now let's have a look at the Brownlow. Lockie Neal two forty five, Clayton Oliver five, Brayshaw five thirty, Petrarca eight, Cripps eight, and Tuke Miller eight dollars. Really, the rest. Yeah, it's pretty quiet week in the Brownlow this mm-hmm. week, so we don't uh, we can skip straight over. I don't think too many at the top are uh, featured. No. So, um, yeah, it's, it might come down to this last round. We've got a few sides playing the Brisbane Melbourne game on Friday night yeah. with Neil Oliver and Petrarca. Uh, might uh, might decide the result of the Brownlow. Get watching people and decide who's going to be the Brownlow winner. Now the Coleman Medal, Charlie Kerno, dollar thirty one. What he's got a three goal lead over Hawkins or oh, Cameron? Yeah. And yeah, okay. yeah, oh Cameron. Yeah. And th- so Cameron at three dollars, Hawkins twenty one, Lynch twenty one, and Peter Wright two oh one. Yeah, you'd think a two horse race. So yeah. Kerno sixty two, Cameron fifty nine, and then Hawkins back on fifty five. So yeah, betting about is and uh, uh, Cameron's still a chance. I think he's a value. 
Oh, Cameron, it's a value. All right. Thanks, MG. Okay, punters, he's having a great season. You need the AFL Stings, and you can get that from $22 a week. I'm sure there's going to be a great finals package in there. So AFL Stings, $22 a week, and that is in Little Betty Live TV shop. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with Nick Toprope Tedeschi for NRL. Welcome back to First Look, proudly brought to you by topsport.com.au. Bet with a bookie you can trust. Bet with Top Sport. Okay, NRL, here we go. Melbourne Storm, they beat Penrith 16-0. The Warriors beat the Bulldogs 42-18. South beat Parramatta 26-0. The Roosters beat North Queensland 32-18. Cronulla beat the West Tigers 36-12. Brisbane Broncos beat Newcastle 28-10. Canberra beat St George 24-22. And the Gold Coast beat Manly 44-24. Top break. Yeah, it was a week of floggings, Nick. Uh, seven of the uh, eight games decided by big margins. Uh, Storm, you know, laid their uh, laid their claims to to the premiership with a six ten win over defending premiers. Uh, Penrith in Penrith was a impressive win. Uh, Warriors dogs eighteen all with about fifteen to go. The Warriors got the uh, uh, job done late. They ran away forty two eighteen for a win that uh, was very popular with the home crowd. Uh, Parramatta, bad, bad loss in South, 26 nothing. The Bunnies absolutely airborne at the moment. Uh, Saturday footy, bit of a, a few worries here for the Queensland teams. Cowboys and Broncos both done very well this year. The Cowboys were never in that game against the Roosters, very poor. Lost the two, I think. But the, uh, the Broncos beat the Knights 28 10, but dropped so much ball. Could still win that game by 50. So uh, very, very poor from Brisbane. Uh, the only close game of the weekend, the Raiders beat the Dragons 24-22. Uh, Dragons made a break late in the game, should have been given a penalty on a full-time to level of scores. Uh, referee gutlessly swallowed his whistle. Uh, funnily enough, the same thing happened six weeks ago when the Dragons laid over the Raiders. Uh, and they were down by two. So, uh, yeah, according to the NRL, two wrongs do make a right. And <laughs> the Titans are uh, only their fourth win of the year, but... Uh, 44-24 over Manly. Uh, Manly's results since their seven homophobic players decided not to play. Uh, lost to the Roosters when they all missed. And the two games back since, they've been flogged by the Eels and they've conceded the most points to the Titans in uh, the entire season, 44 uh, Ramley Hammond, so their season is now done and dusted. Thanks, Top Rope. I agree with you. Their season is cooked. Okay, the bookie wrap, five of eight. Faves, three of eight covers, five of eight over totals, and five of eight home teams. And for the season, 69% of faves, 49% of covers, 54% over totals, and 59% for the home teams. Yeah, numbers you numbers you kind of expect uh, uh, this time of year. We're kind of seeing that uh, um, slight lean into the overs. You're certainly seeing some overs games here. We were uh, some, some big games. We had uh, two of rich 60 kind of four or five years, 40, but I could have reached a lot more. So um, I'll be sticking with the overs for the last couple of rounds of the season, that's for sure. Okay, the overs there for the last couple of rounds. All right. Now, after round 22 for the GGOA results, five of six, he had 18 and a half units bet and he won 14.6 units. And for the season, 62 out of 55, 294 and a half units bet. You've won 49.11 49.11 units, and that is a return of 16.67%. You'd be shut down at every bookie then. <laughs> Lucky I put enough rubbish around it, Nikki, to, uh, to keep me viable. So. <laughs> and I just want to say, game multi, anyone? <laughs> for the last two weeks, that is 11. You've only gotten one wrong out for the last two weeks, so 11 out of 12. That is insane. Insane. Yeah, it's been a good little run. We've, uh, we're very happy with that. The Commonwealth Games has really given us a – the kick in the pants that we needed to uh, to get going. But, uh, no, look, it's a good time of year to, to, to just, yeah, you just really want to be on on good teams and against bad teams. And, um, you yeah, know, pretty happy. With, I'll be pretty confident going into the last couple of rounds with, with being able to find a few bets. And, and yeah, it, it's no genius here. He's riding in the hot hand. And, and the only one that you got wrong was the game that we went head-to-head -head against. So I, I picked Cronulla and you went West Tigers. I mean, I'm not saying I'm GGO yeah, way. Way but... too good. <laughs> uh, better than GGOA, one and zero. Um, it's uh, now the Tigers' loss was the only loss for the week. I took the big plus there. The numbers kind of stacked up reasonably well. It was a, a small spread of the week, luckily, because no one likes backing the West Tigers. But yeah, the, the Warriors um, first we declared them on the show last week against the Bulldogs. That line was absolutely stupid. I think they end up jumping. That line jumped moved to, to two and a half by, by kickoff, but. Uh, um, you always want to take on a team who has been absolutely flogged before. It's just it is one of the best truisms in rugby league gambling. 
um, especially if they can see a lot of points, which the Warriors did. So um, they were a good bet. Bunnies never in danger there against the Eels. Uh, Roosters, Cowboys uh, went over in the last minutes um, for late punters. So lucky for early punters, it went over a little bit earlier. So got the job done there. The Dragons had to score a couple of late tries to, to cover the six there. And the Gold Coast mainly total ended up jumping close to 54, 53 and a half with most bookies, 54 with some, uh, but covered the 46 and a half easily and ended up making up 68. So uh, comfortable winner. Okay, thanks, Top Rope. Now, let's talk about Thursday night's game. So 7.50 p.m. at Core Stadium. As you said, it is the grand final rematch. South Sydney taking on Penrith. South $1.55, Penrith two forty five, and the line is four and a half. Talk me through it. Yeah, who would have seen this line uh, six weeks ago? Uh, but, yeah, obviously no no Cleary, no Luai. They'll be out for uh, uh, to lose the finals for Cleary, Luai, about this year. Uh, and Dylan Edwards missed last week as well, so probably the three key spine players there, three of their foremost and three of their five most important players are missing. Uh, South is absolutely firing with, with, with Latrell back, and it's not only his play, he's just getting the best out of, out of Cody Walker. Cameron Murray's playing the best for his play of the year as well, so... Um, don't know what the status of Dylan Edwards is. He's probably likely to play, but oh, I, yeah, Penrith are not nearly as good away from him. They were well beaten by the Storm last week. The lack of cohesion in the halves and the, and the the failure to kind of get a good kicking game and be able to work off that, which has been the key to pretty much all the success, uh, it was really telling there. So um, they had 50 tackles inside the Melbourne 20 and couldn't crack them. So real worries there for for, for how the, the near points against good defensive sides. South obviously didn't concede a point against the Eels last week. Give me the bunnies in this market. They'll absolutely flog the Panthers. Okay, a flogging is coming. Thank you, Top Rope. Now let's have a look at the premiership market. Penrith, they're still 220. The Storm are 550. Cronulla, 8. North Queensland, 9. South Sydney, 10. The Roosters, 12. Parra, 19. Broncos, 29. And the Canberra Raiders two oh one. A couple of teams just call out this week. Uh, uh, potentially right up there. Souths uh, obviously flying. A good leap for Melbourne to get in the top four. Could do it. Uh, and dollars seems like a, a, a nice price there. Of course, know the twenty nine dollars energy a few weeks ago. Our league expert and uh, Roosters twelve dollars. Uh, they are hitting form at the right time of year. And if any team from that bottom, the bottom three teams in there are going to cause some trouble, it's going to be the Roosters. So. Uh, yeah, $12, they've got a pretty uh, tough run in, but if they get through those, they're going to be primed for finals. Geez, I hope you're right there at $12 for the Chooks because, you know, you know I love my babies. You know I want to cheer them home. <laughs> all right, thanks, Top Rope. Now, punters, he is having an insane month. He is all over it. You need the GGOA. Can you imagine what his finals package is going to be like? The GGOA, you can get that from $22 a week in the Little Birdie Live TV shop, GGOA, Little Birdie TV and that is $22 a week. Okay, MG, it's that time of week? It is, Nikki. Uh, we're the charity time, and we've, uh, speaking of being on fire, mm-hmm. we've had a fair month, I think, uh, <laughs> Look at of, that. Uh, of the charity bets going on. Uh, I think we went uh, 3-0 and this week, uh, 2 out of 3, and then 3-0 and the week before. So even though we're tipping on a Monday and it's a bit precarious the way we tip, uh, we can only do with the lines we're dealt up at this stage where uh, the results are coming through. So we're... Um, I'm 14 and 9 this year, got two gap lap over top rope on 12 and 11, and Nikki's one behind at mm-hmm. 11 and 12. So going along nicely, as you can see last week, uh, Brisbane covered the line there. They won by 15. Uh, Souths won easily, and the Sharks, as Nikki's already uh, punched <laughs> up on top rope there, she uh, went head to head against top rope, and he's only loser for the week. So good week for the charity punters. This week, we've got uh, week 24. So top rope, we'll go to you first for Wayside Chapel. What are you tipping in the NRL this week? I'm going to be uh, happy to join. I'm going to follow Nick in with the Cronulla Sharks minus eight and a half against Manly. Manly are completely shot at the moment. Plenty of trouble in the camp there. I'll be all over the Sharks. Okay, Cronulla minus eight and a half. And Top Rope is saying get your chips in early on next game. He reckons it's a double figure finish for sure here. Nikki, for Sids and Kids, are uh, we doing Rugby League or AFL this week? Sticking with NRL? I'm sticking with NRL because I think the AFL is going to be a bit tough. Um, and I'm going North Queensland, minus 18 and a half. Like Top Rope said, teams that get flogged, they come back. So, you know, they're going back to home. So hopefully they'll have the win. All right, Nikki. North Queensland, minus 18 and a half there. And in the AFL for my charity, which is Love Me, Love You, 
I am going to go in the big game, Collingwood mm. v Carlton. I'm uh, a bit surprised actually on my early ratings how Collingwood and Carlton is a pick em game. I know Collingwood lost to Sydney on the weekend, but uh, geez, I'd like to have a fair wager that Collingwood are going to start favouring this game. So Collingwood at pick em for me. <laughs> Thanks, MG. Everyone take the tip there for Collingwood. All right, that is a wrap on this week's edition of First Look. Remember, you can follow us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, download our podcast everywhere you get to good podcasts from. Follow us on socials. We are on Twitter and Insta at TV. Remember, all your footy betting action is at topsport.com.au. Uh, join OB with the boys on Friday because you're not going to want to miss the weekend edition for the uh, Friday lines. And I'll be here on Monday to recap the weekend. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.